It's just uncanny. It's amazing. And it's just fantastic. But we have, we have to have a revelation. You know, um, Jesus asked the disciples, who, 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 do, who do men say that I am? And who do you say that I am? And when, he, and when he got to Peter, Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. How many know that we, we need to move out of the flesh and blood zone and move into the revelation zone? Um, we live by revelation. If you're a born again, bona fide believer, you live by revelation light. I mean, the scripture tells us that in the city of Zion, the lamb is the light of the city and there's no need for created light. Right. And so we have to have the light of the lamb and the light of God, uh, the throne Eprovescing and, 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 and concoursing with crystal pure water, according to Revelation chapter 23, verse 1. But that light has to be a revelation. And uh, Jesus said to Peter, he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades or hell will not be able to stop it not be able to stop it so we're in a no stop no drop anointing when god has given us so premier cuts from heaven divine and we're on a shine and uh, god has given us all inclusive power prowess privileges and exacting upon us acting upon us in such tremendous overtures from heaven that it's hard to fathom that anybody would not be living with God or for God. It really is mind-boggling. When you think about how much God has provided and is providing and what he can bring and what he does and how he does it, that people can turn a deaf ear and look the other way when God is displaying himself in such a tremendous fashion. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if we look <clears throat> at Matthew, and I'm going to go back and just read a few verses again in Matthew 28 as I read them yesterday, and uh, starting with verse 1, and I'll just go over it real quick. <clears throat> I want to point something out here tonight. I hope this will be a benefit to a lot of people. Now, if you're not a prayer warrior, and you don't know anything about intercession, and you don't know anything about demon spirits, and you don't know anything about the occult, you don't know, if you don't know anything about the spirit world, then you're probably going to get lost in what I have to say tonight. But if you are and you pay attention, yeah. um, you, you can affirm some of the truths that I was sharing with you. But after much prayer, the Lord kind of brought this up. So I don't want to, I don't want to just pass by what God wants to reveal. But in, in Matthew 28, 1, it says, after the Sabbath, and since we're at the Easter season and we're turning the corner on, of course, it's Easter in Canada, right? It's Easter Monday in Canada, so uh, welcome all you Canadians. God bless you. It's Easter in Canada as well. So, um, In Matthew 28, after the Sabbath, after the Sabbath, a lot of people that don't attend church and don't respect God and don't respect the Sabbath day are not going to be privy or privileged to experience these kinds of things. But those that do honor God and honor the Sabbath, and because the Sabbath is holy. At dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene, of course we know Mary Magdalene was a uh, prostitute. Right? What's a prostitute doing up seeing Jesus? 
How in the world is that possible? For all the people that followed Jesus, the first one to see him alive is a prostitute, former, former prostitute. Now think about that when you're trying to qualify yourself or disqualify yourself. We've got a woman here that paled in morality, but yet her eyes were open and her heart was changed. And she saw what Peter saw, that this was, in fact, the Christ, the Messiah. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. They went to look at the tomb. And there was a violent earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven. From the angel of the Lord came down from me. I want you to know that angels have access to the earth. Absolutely. And, and they come down from heaven. They do. So they bring heavenly help. Yes, they do. They bring heavenly intervention. Mm -hmm. And they bring heavenly deliverance, as we'll see here. Yes, In fact, they bring such help that that which is impossible becomes possible when angels infiltrate our world and our consciousness. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, they were headed for the tomb, they were headed for the crisis, they were headed for the critical mass, they were headed for the impossibility of things. Going to the tomb, that's what the tomb represents. Roll back the stone and sat on it. Now what rolled back the stone? The earthquake. It caused an earthquake. Caused a tremor. I wonder how many earthquakes that are going on out west in Los Angeles or some other places around the world in India or whatever, Russia, are caused by angels. Disruptive things. Sometimes they can be disruptive. They have the power to do it. And he appeared, uh, his appearance was like uh, that of lightning. And his clothes were white as snow. The Lord has really given me insight on the tomb. Because we see that the angel of the Lord was there. But as we move on here, it says um, in verse 4, the, the uh, guards were so afraid of him, the angel, that they shook and became like dead men. Amen. Way, way back, way, 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 way back in my, my beginnings as a spiritual being, I came home from Republic Steel working in a pipe testing company, a pipe testing division of Republic Steel as a third ingot helper. And um, I came home, took off my leggings and took off my, my gloves and took up my, my hat and was going upstairs to change clothes. And as I went upstairs, the, uh, something tapped me. I'm, this, I just had become born again. Something tapped me on my right shoulder and tried to push me down. And I think I've told this before, but I became afraid because there was nobody there, but somebody was pushing on my shoulder. So I, my bed was right there. So I, I, I ran and jumped on my bed because I didn't want to fall on the floor. And then a giant wheel of fire wow. turned and it moved up and got to my feet and started rolling up my body. And uh, when it got to my about my uh, thigh level, I was really, really, really astonished, and I was so uh, fearful and afraid and upset. And then I said, "Well, I, there's no way I can compete with this." So I just said, well, "I'm just going to just acquiesce and just let the thing have its way." So it rolled up over me on the top of my head, and when it did, it, it elevated my body off the mattress of the bed, Amen. not very far, maybe that much, but I know I was suspended in the air. Then I screamed out, and when I did, boom, I hit the mattress. Wow. And uh, 
I didn't know it, but at that time I was delivered from multiple demons. Because I had the filthiest mouth that you've ever heard when I was a young man. Uh, cursing and vile and, and putrid and, and uh, angry and just, uh, uh, I, wasn't very, I wasn't a very pretty person to be around. But I thought it was just a way of life. It, you know, to me, it's just, hey, that's what you do. And, but anyway, uh, and, and other things uh, were involved in my childhood, on which I won't even talk about. But the thing about it is, I, when I hit the mattress, demons came out of me, and I didn't know it, but I heard a voice that said, you're going to preach. Wow. And uh, the next day, I get a call from Pastor Robert Graber on 25th Street in Canton, Ohio, at the Bethel Assembly of God Church, and he told me, he asked me to go and speak at the Stark County Jail. Wow. I never preached in my life. <laughs> but I said, I might as well. I mean, how, it can't be any more fearful than what I just experienced. <laughs> so I got up and went. I preached. I don't even know what I said. But I got up there and preached to everybody in that prison that, that was there for the service. And I asked them to lift their hands up. They want to receive the Lord. And everybody in there lifted up their hand. Everyone. And I was looking in Marble. I didn't know what to do. I just figured they, they lift their hand to accept the Lord. And that's all I had to do. There was no follow-up ministry. There was no prayer. There was nothing. I, I didn't know what to do. I wasn't schooled and tooled in anything. And one of the prisoners walked up to me afterwards, and he said, don't ever do that to us again. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, you got us so high in the spirit that we were expecting an explosion of some sort, and we were expecting God to step right in here. And then you just gave the microphone back to the person in charge and sat down. And I didn't know, I, you know, I didn't know anything about preaching. But the point of it was that God elevated me, delivered me from demonic oppression and, and, and parts of me possession. And I went in there and I was able to speak with the fire of God coming out of my mouth with such force and such magnitude and such power that everybody that was in bondage and incarcerated and in cuffs or whatever was totally, totally, I mean, they met God. So what does that have to do with an empty tomb? How many times have you and I looked at that scene of the empty tomb of Jesus and wondered what happened while he was in the tomb. Where did he go? What did he say? And what happened for those days? But you know, the Bible tells us that he actually descended into hell. Now, that's right. He took the keys of death and hell away from the devil himself. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. Took the keys away of death and hell from the devil, the one in charge over that area. Before Jesus even left, he told his disciples, Behold, I give you all power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. See, this is what he was going down to do. He was going down to deliver you and I from our demise spiritually. We were all spiritually dead. And we were locked in to doom and gloom, and our life would be over. So let's go over and let's look at a couple of scriptures. Um, I don't know how to, how to say this. I'm going to point out a couple of things in, in Psalm 22. Psalm 22. Um,
Thank you, Lord. Points out a lot of things about the things that we don't know about in terms of what happened to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In verse 12, it says here, it says, Many bulls surrounded me. Now, we're going to be talking in natural terms of natural things, but if you're an intercessor and a prayer warrior, you can get some of this because you've already encountered some of this. Mighty bull, or many bulls surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan encircled me. So we see that he was surrounded and he was encircled by bullish forces. If you've ever been, if you if you ever seen a uh, matador in a bullfight, and you saw, or if you ever been to a rodeo and you've seen some of those men riding bulls and getting thrown off and staying on just for a few seconds. And they're, they're, they're hallowed as heroes if they stay on for more than 15 or 20 seconds wow. on a bull that bucks and, and, and a bull that, that shakes and jives and moves around his torso. You can imagine, he said he's surrounded by these bulls. Wow. Then he said in verse 13, roaring lions that tear their prey open. Roaring lions that tear their prey open Mouths wide against me. Gaping, open, mouths wide, lions roaring at him. So we see in the word of the demonic, there are lions that tear and that they, they rip their prey open with their mouth. That's beastly, that's ghastly. But Jesus is in the middle of a conflict down here. And he has been banished to hell for your sake and my sake. He had to go there and be punished. He said, I am pouring out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has waxed, uh, has turned to wax. It has melted within me. My mouth is dried like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you lay me, lay me in the dust of death. Now look what it says here in verse 10. Dogs surround me. A pack of villains encircle me. So here they're talking about dogs, and other translations translation said they're wolves, a pack of wolves that viciously encircled. And that's what the Lord was showing me about this process of Jesus going to the, going to, uh, the, the, the dungeons and the designings of hell and going into wow. death, is that there's packs wow. of villainous encirclements of dogs and wolves that are just raving mad and crazed. Uh, and, and they're packs. There's packs of demons that follow people. Even in above the hellish world, even in this world, they pack up in teams and they come to tear, to rend, to, to hurt, to molest, to contest, and to destroy. And I, many times I've been in prayer when I, I've seen those teeth. I, I've seen... The, uh, the, the, the doggish teeth being unveiled as, as they, they opened up their mouth and you could see the sharp, jagged teeth as they roar and growl and grip and, 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 and are so rude and so violent that they'll tear you to death if you didn't have the blood of Jesus. You know what I'm talking about? And so people out there in the world that don't have the blood and don't know Jesus Christ, uh, if it wasn't for the mercy of God, 
that are under the curse, that are not under the safe haven of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, are open to be attacked by these packs of villainous dogs. And he says, they pierce my hands and my feet. Look at that. Jesus on the cross was being attacked by these villainous wolves and these dog, pack of dogs. And, 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 and these, these, these agents were using human beings as they, as they nailed him. They pierced my hands and my feet and all my bones are, are on display. People's, people uh, stare and gloat over me. People stare and gloat. How many times have you been in prayer, in intercession, when you felt the gloating of the enemy, the strutting of the enemy? You felt the enemy uh, walking around and just lifting himself like a proud peacock, thinking he, thinking he has you cornered, thinking he has you convinced, thinking he has you in a corner where you can't get out. And they really get off on this. Demons get off on this. They love to gloat. They say they divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. See, this is all the crucifixion. But you, Lord, do not, uh, you, Lord, are not far from me. You are my strength. And come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword and from the precious uh, and and my to deliver me from the sword by precious life from the power of the dogs. There it is again, dogs. Rescue me from the from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the hordes of the wild ox, wild oxen, hordes of wild oxen. I mean, these are these are agents of destruction that. Once let loose, have you ever seen a stampede of cattle? I mean, it's, it's hideous. It's, it's, it, you, can't, you can't get out of the way. Once they're in a stampede like that, you're done. You get hoofed to death. But here we're talking about horns of wild oxen charging violently. And this world is like that. Hello. This world is like that. I mean, the traffic that we have on the roads today is like that. I mean, the people out in public are so rude and crude, so many of them. Um, they are just uh, molesters, and they don't care. There's no morality. There's, there's no line of, of, uh, of, of, of righteousness. They have no conscience, and, and just running about and stirring up, agitating trouble wherever they're at. Hello. And see, we need to have power. Because Jesus gives us the power to be able to break the tyranny of these things and break the strength of these things and break the power of these things. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's go to, a, that's chapter 22, but let's go to Jonah chapter 2. Now, you don't hear a lot of preachers preaching about stuff like this. But see, I know because I've interceded and battled and warred so much with the devil, and the devil has showed up and tried to beat me down and whip me and strip me and tried to uh, cost me and has, has, has stood up with his breath and tried to breathe uh, shame and reproach on me. I've been, in, I've been under the gun so many times. I know what the devil is, and I know what he's like. I've even seen... The dogs. I have seen the bulls. I have seen the wolves. I have seen their hideous faces and their hairy, their hairy creatures. I've seen large headed hairy creatures with teeth and fangs just real long, like, like, like a foot long, you know, on both ends. I've seen, I've seen, I've literally seen them with my eyes. Um, so I'm just going to skip down here a little bit since we don't want to take, take up a lot of time. Just want to get down to 
Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I thought it was in chapter 2 where... Yeah, verse 5. Okay, let's, let's, let's jump back up there. And what chapter am I in here? I think I'm in the wrong chapter. No wonder I'm in, I'm in chapter 3. Okay. <laughs> I was saying... I was saying, I know it's chapter 2 for sure. It's real short. It's only chapter 12, 3 and 3. But these, this gives you great insight to what the Lord was going through and what the, how the Lord was having to contest. He said in verse, in verse 2, he says, In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me. And from the deep in the realm of the dead, there it is, from the deep in the realm of the dead or in the belly of hell, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. Yes. Now, look at these variegated things that happen. You're going to look at certain things that happen in, in this underworld. You, hur you, heard, uh, you hurled me into the depths. Jesus being catapulted into the depths. You hurled me into the depths. Can you imagine being hurled into the depths of hell? It's, it's even, you can't complicate. Contemplate. I knew a woman, Mary Kay Baxter, who the Lord came and visited her 30 days in a row and took her to hell for 30 straight days. And then he came and visited her and took her to heaven for 10 straight days. And uh, she wrote a book about it. I mean, I, we met her personally. At TBN, we took, we took pictures, and she actually preached in, in this room. But she was a living testimony of somebody that came back from hell and talked about the different departments of hell, compartments, and that type of thing. But I'm just showing you these things because I want you to know what Jesus was up against. Yeah. It said, you hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas. And um, the currents swirled about me. The seas were the currents. How many has ever been, how much everybody has seen a movie or something of somebody being caught up in a current? of water and then going down and drowning. When I was a young man I, at Friendship Bakers in Ravenna, Ohio, I remember uh, watching a young man drowning. There was nothing you can do, up and down, bobbing up and down, finally went down, didn't come back in, and some lifeguard ran in there and rescued him and got him, thank God, out of the water. But these are swirling currents that you, you want to get out, but you can't get out. Hello. They're too strong. They're too powerful. Yeah. Um, the current swirled about me and all their waves and breakers swept over me. All their waves and breakers swept over me. Look at that. It's been swept over. I mean, taken down. I mean, just sucked down in the vortex. And there's no way to get out. And you just go down, down, and down. And the violence of the waves and the crashing and all of the twirling and swirling of that, of that, hell down there and I said I've, I've, I, uh, I said I've been um, banished from your sight I have been banished from your sight look at that Jesus God looked the other way and, and God looked the other way and Jesus himself said Lord why hast thou forsaken me he was banished from God's sight But he said, I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waves threatened me. The deep surrounded me. I mean, how many times have you been in threatening situations in this life where you felt like you were going to get snuffed out? You felt you were going to get terminated and taken out. And it's the whirling and swirling of things is so great. There's so many things happening at once, issues and circumstances, happenstance. It just doesn't seem like, it seems like the more you try to get out, the more you go down. And it seems like the more you seem to uh, try to put things together, they fall apart. That even happens in this life. 
Everything that happens in hell happens in type, or actually happens in a little bit on, we have hell on earth. We have hell on earth. So the natural types are spiritual. The deep surrounded me, and uh, seaweed was wrapped around my head. And the roots of the mountains sank down. The roots of the mountain sank down beneath and barred me in forever. And barred me in forever. The roots of the mountains sank down the earth. And I was swallowed and wrapped around. Uh, a seaweed was wrapped around my head. See, the Lord, he was encased and wrapped and wrapped. And with all that going on, and, and still something got a hold of it, it was actually pulling him down, like just totally encasing his body, wrapping around his body roots from the mountains. And they were so strong and so, so, so powerful that it kept pulling him down. Um, and he says when, when he was locked in like that, he says he was barred, he was barred in forever. But look what it says here. But you, Lord, my God brought me, brought my life up from the pit. You, Lord, brought my life from the pit when my life was ebbing away. I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you and to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. Forsake their own mercy. There'll be nobody in hell that can't say that God didn't extend mercy to them. But they refuse. They reject. They don't accept. They think it's a fallacy. They think it's fakery. They think it's just a, 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 a figment of our imagination. But I guarantee you that as sure as there's a heaven, there's a hell. Are you kidding me? And you know... Uh, we get bound up, wound up, and tied up with so many things and so many fetters and withers, and you know, you know, just like Samson, how they tied his hands, and, yeah. you know, and, and and how he broke chains and, and he yeah. broke he broke chains like you you'd break flask, just like a ribbon. He broke and broke loose. He he had the power. It wasn't just natural power, but it was supernatural power. Supernatural power can deliver you from your stronghold uh, and being bound by and being controlled by evil spirits. And we need to know that there are spirits that try to enwrap themselves around us and try to get us in a position where we're hapless and helpless and we can't find our identity and we can't find our own life and it just seems like everything is ebbing and slipping away and it doesn't seem like there's any hope. But I want you to know that Jesus jetted himself out. And he says, those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you what I have I vowed that I will make it good. I'll pay that which I vowed, and I say salvation comes from the Lord. Salvation comes from the Lord. Amen. And so the, the fish, God commanded the fish to vomit Jonah up on to dry land. On the dry land. So there's deliverance. We simply have to turn ourselves to the temple, turn ourselves to God, 
shout unto God and make that significant sound and cry for help. And some people need to vow to get themselves out of the condition that they're in, the situation, and cry out to God. And then God swoops down and delivers us from the belly of hell as it were. But Satan, you know, he doesn't, he's not pulling any punches anymore. He's not masquerading. He's not, you know what I mean? He's showing up. And people are using their agents of hell. They're using satanic uh, agenda and they're using satanic witchcraft and they're using all sorts of things to conjure up and call up these demons from the abyss. And so we're fighting against chaotic things and fighting against darkness and fighting against all these rude uh, and crude environmental things that have no respect for God and don't love God and and are are careless and callous and indifferent. These are kind of spirits that I'm talking about. But I've got good news for you. Jesus came out, came out of hell. And when he came out, you came out. Amen. And if Jesus can survive hell, we can survive anything. Because he grabbed us on the way out. Pulled us out, lifted us out. Took us out of the shame, took us out of the reproach, took us out of the condemnation, took out us, took us out of the judgment, took us out of the anger and ire of God. Set us free. Amen. Amen. Roll the stone away that was sealed and came out. When you came out, Lord, we came out with you. And we're emancipated and delivered and celebrated now by heaven itself. And see, as as the uh, sinner knows the throes of hell, the citizens of heaven know the overtures of heaven, know the glory of heaven, know the pomp of heaven, know the privileges of heaven, know the regality and royalty that heaven represents, and know total deliverance from these demonic forces and forces that try to, actually they get together in, Packs, like we said. Yeah, wow. And they make packs with death and hell. Y'all make it? And they serve Satan. They and they're, they're vessels of dishonor. Yeah. They're vile and unclean creatures that if you go, if you go to um, so I said Psalm 2, why do the heathen, heathen rage? And people imagine a vain thing. And they said, put, a, put aside that anointing. We don't want that anointing. You know, the raging, caging demons that don't want the anointing. They want to come close to God. But I'm telling you, we're out of the tomb now. And we're out of hell now. And we're out of bondage now. And the Bible tells us to stand fast in the liberty wherewith we are called. And I don't care if it is a mob. I don't care if it is a throng. I don't care if it is environment of a pack and dens of whatever comes our way of dezzanines and demons and darkness and death and defeat and destruction. I'm telling you right now, Jesus has already lorded over it. Not just one demon, but packs of demons. Amen. Not just one fallen angel, but all angels. He's given a name above every name in heaven and earth. Can you say amen? A name above every name. He has more glory and more power than Satan's kingdom in his small little fingertip. You know, I said some things, and I hope hope it wakes people up. We don't even know the significance of our deliverance and freedom that we have been privileged to celebrate with Jesus Christ. You know, some of these demons, uh, they foil and spoil and bring people into toil. I, I know situations where people have been in witchcraft and 
made a pact with the devil. And so it was time to expire. The devil claimed their soul. And they, they begin to go down to the death corridor. Death corridor. It's called the death corridor. They go down the death corridor. And as they're going down, all of the, all of the powers of hell are, uh, you know, are, 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 are raging and, 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 and uh, on a uh, mission to overtake and to, and to really torment that person. You know, but they're, they're held back just for a brief period of time as they descend down into the darkness. And then uh, there was one man that, that we knew that was in witchcraft that he actually the Lord intercepted him, yeah. grabbed him, and he cried out to the, to, the, to the Lord God. And God pulled him up out of the traffic of these powers and pulled him up out of hell. And delivered that man. And he, he's telling him that testimony today. All over the world. Give the Lord a hand clap for that. All over the world. And that's what the, what's what the devil's trying to do. He's trying to destroy your financial picture. The demons want to destroy your family life. The demons want to destroy your testimony. They want to destroy your ability to live for God. Uh, they'll, they'll try anything and try to do everything. But I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't make any difference as long as you stay in sync with Christ. And as long as you stay in his presence and you walk by faith in Christ and you appropriate the blood of Jesus and you walk under his mantle and his anointing, no weapon formed against you can prosper. No weapon formed against you can prosper. Yeah, and as Jonah did as he came up out, he began to praise and magnify God. So I'm telling you, um, an empty tomb it means more than just Jesus got up. He not only got up, he got out. You got up and you got out too. Can you say amen? You got up and out. So now it's just... Uh, it's gravy, it's gravy on the potatoes. It's, you know, it's icing on the cake. And we thank God for that. And I was in Jerusalem and walking the streets and they had a riot. And I, I, the Lord spoke to me and he said, stop. And they were coming, rushing me. I, I was just stampeding. People were in a frenzy. They were afraid. And he and, and he said, just put your arms down. And I put my arms down like this. Wow. And held them there. And nobody touched me. They went to this side and they went to this side and they stampeded, but nobody touched me. I was completely delivered. He just said, stop. Don't run. Put your arms down. And I did it. If I would have run, I probably would have got stampeded. Who knows what would happen? But you know, God is God. He's our shield and our buckler. He's our horn and our salvation. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Well, that's it for now. I'm going to go ahead and close it off. God bless you. I know this is a little bit different from the norm. This isn't your average message, but. If you haven't met the wolves and the dogs and the bulls and you haven't met uh, these uh, oxen with horns, you haven't been in the spirit world very long. Because once in the spirit, you can bind these elements, whether they be packs or whatever they may be, you can bind them and you can cast them off. You can shut them down in the spirit before you ever walk out the door. Let me just say one more thing. I was at a basketball game in high school, Kent McKinley against another team. Kent McKinley, one of the strongest basketball teams in the state of Ohio. And this other team came in and beat them. And um, a, a woman and a man uh, were out. I, I, when I came out of the arena, I looked, and there was two of them standing there holding hands. And there was probably 1,500 people around them in a rainbow 
and they were, they were jostling with, for power. The, the mob wanted to overtake the two, the man and the woman holding hands. And about 1,500 people were there. They could have easily rushed in and destroyed them. But that mob was held at bay by two people. But the angels of the Lord were there. Hello. Hello they were. The angels of the Lord were there. Yeah. And I watched them contest with 1,500 people, and then they walked away. That's <laughs> that opened my eye, and I wasn't even saved at the time. Wow. In later years, when I thought about it, I said, that was God's intervention. That was. And he recognized it. Thank you, Jesus. So what I'm telling you is, don't give in. Don't give in. No. Don't doubt. Don't collapse. Don't fall and implode. Stand, having done all to stand, stand and see the salvation of God. Give the Lord a hand clap. Somebody say amen. All right. God, did you already cut us off? God bless you. God's best. Talk to you later. Bye-bye for now. See you. Sayonara.